thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. Obviously, the man that needs no introduction in this area of town, Sea Sprayer. Thank you so much for joining us. Chris, good to be with you. Yeah, it's yeah. not much going on here. <laughs> Tuesday morning here to restaurant. Uh, we open, I think, around uh, four o'clock every day, and then we're open on Saturday and Sundays also. So uh, we got a little extra time right now. Yeah, as you mentioned, it's Tuesday, but on Thursday we're going to be a week a week away from some Gator football. What are kind of the feelings going into this season? I'm. A feeling like a lot of people, I think if we have a winning season and uh, maybe go win a bowl game, that'd be a good year. I mean, it won't be one of those great, great years, but it'd be a good year. And uh, we've got a new team, like 45, 46 new players, new quarterback, whoever it may be. Uh, Graham Mertz, I guess, is our starter right now. Uh, I like that other kid uh, that uh, has come on. Uh, I think his last name is Leon. And uh, he was like the third or so. But it seems like... Uh, like Coach Napier said, every time he's in there, the ball goes up and down the field yeah. in a good way. So don't be surprised if uh, Leon doesn't play some here real soon. All right, all right. Um, so the last time the Gators talked to you, Dan Mullen was still at the helm of this team. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the fall off from two straight New Year's Six Bowl games to no longer even in coaching right now? Yeah, I guess that did happen pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, before him, uh, Coach McElwain, uh, gosh, he won the division two out of three years and then the fourth year I guess some things happened and uh, he was gone before the season was over so I don't know I don't know what's causing all the disruptions because uh, their record on some of these guys uh, is not all that bad really you can have up and down years a bit uh, but it seems like uh, the management or the athletic director or the president whoever's in charge uh, takes his time for a change and so that's what's happened about every four years now uh, since Urban Meyer left, he was here only six. I guess I was here 12, longest of anybody, yeah. although it went by like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, if you last over five, six years as a coach in the SEC, you've done pretty well. Yeah, obviously Napier's at the helm now. What are kind mm-hmm. of your first impressions of him, and what are the expectations for him going into year two? Well, oh, I think he's done a, a, you know, a pretty good job. Obviously, six and seven is not what we're looking for. You know, if we're headed in the right direction, uh, recruiting seemed to be going very well. Hopefully, if all the players that are committed sign, so uh, that that's uh, obviously a sign of where your football program is. Is the recruiting staying at a high level and so forth? So. Uh, we'll see. I think he's got better coaches this year. You know, sometimes as fans, we always look at who's the quarterback. Who's hey, we had a quarterback who was the what fourth pick in the first round of the NFL. So we had a top-notch quarterback last year. Still had a losing record. So there's more to a football team than the quarterback. And, and hopefully this year, uh, our new uh, defensive coordinator Austin Armstrong will get these guys playing with more accountability, know your assignment, and play full speed. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of feeling out that goes down in the first year as a head coach. What kind of stands out about Napier and what you saw in that first year and any conversations you may have had with him? Well, just what you see from the outside. I'm not, I don't go to practice every day. I've seen two or three this year. That's about it. I think he's done everything pretty much uh, the way you're supposed to. I know he's hustling in recruiting uh, as hard as anybody. So uh, we just got to go watch our guys play this year. And hopefully, uh, I think we will play better than last year. Yeah, obviously, Napier just announced recently that Graham Mertz was going to be give you one to start the season. What have you gotten to see out of him, and what should Gator fans kind of expect? Well, again, he hadn't played much at all, so we're waiting to see to that first game. Practices have gone pretty well from what I understand. But, uh, yeah, we got to wait and see. we got a whole bunch of new players uh, that are going to be out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe ETN, our running back, and uh, Montrell, our other running back, I hope both of them can get the ball a lot this year. I think that would be a key if we can run very successfully and stay on the field and uh, not make our defense play the whole game. But uh, obviously our defense needs to play way better than our group last year. Yeah, and as if, obviously, as you mentioned before, Anthony Richardson going fourth overall, and now it's a new quarterback. But you still feel as if that running back room could still carry this team to possibly a bowl game as well? Well, everybody has to do their uh, assignment, do their part of the uh, uh, team. Uh, so that's a team effort. And, you know, back in the days I was coaching, our quarterbacks got a lot of publicity, but one reason they were so good, defense got the ball back real quickly, yes. I remember the first year we played Georgia, uh, Georgia had more punts than they had first downs. They had eight first downs the whole game and punted ten times. 
So, uh, man, it, it's easy to play offense when you're getting the ball back like that all the time. And uh, that was one reason uh, Shane Matthews was SEC Player of the Year uh, two years in a row. We had so many opportunities. So it's a, it's a team sport. It's not just the quarterback and the offense. And speaking of Shane Matthews, he has this team going about 8-4 and four this year. Some other members of your teams have us going a little lower. What are kind of your predictions for this season for the game? Oh, I just threw out a 7-5. and five. There's a, probably a very in the middle of a mm. pick type thing. But uh, it could go both ways. Heck, we all know it could go both ways. Uh, Who would ever thought we'd lose at Vanderbilt last year? And uh, after the big win over South Carolina, uh, we lost two in a row. And then uh, the whole team bailed out before the bowl game, which is discouraging. Uh, but maybe uh, maybe we'll have different players that feel, you know, accountable that uh, want to finish the season this year when we get the bowl game, hopefully if we get one. And taking a trip kind of around college football, you mentioned, you know, a lot of teams have struggled with bowl games, having players kind of opt out. What is kind of the difference between what it used to be where players would really embrace those bowl games versus nowadays where a lot of them are opting out? Yeah, I don't I don't like it. I don't know if many coaches like it. And uh, obviously you cannot tell a player he has to play. You can't tell him that. You hope he wants to. But I've said this. When the players in Alabama start opting out before the bowl game, then I'll say, well, it must be okay. Nobody wants to play the bowl game, but they all play at Alabama. There's a reason Alabama's considered best football program in the nation. Uh, last year, the number one pick, Bryce Young, the number two pick, Anderson, Will Anderson, I think, they both played in the bowl game, and they won the bowl game. It wasn't like he had a token appearance. He played about the whole game. Yeah. And uh, Alabama won the bowl game, finished, I think, fourth or fifth in the nation, something like that, 11-2. That's not a bad year at all. And uh, But they feel a commitment to their teammates. And I wish all of my guys would feel that commitment to the team, the university, and play to the end. That was one thing. Uh, when I was here, one of my goals was always win the bowl game. Because if you win the bowl game, you're usually going to finish maybe in the top 10 in the country. So uh, that was one of our goals from the beginning. So there wasn't any thought of really anybody opting out. And one of the things that makes Alabama as big and prominent as they are is the big coaching tree that comes from it. Obviously, Napier is a part of Saban's coaching tree. Yeah. But you have a coaching tree of your own, Jed Fish, over at Arizona. Now, there's a story that recently came out about him as a student kind of putting post-it notes on your desk trying to get trying to get be a part of that program. What do you remember about him? And does he, he was, uh, yeah, was a, he was a volunteer coach here. He, uh, he says, that, okay, if I show up and help the running back coach, uh, Buddy Tevens, who... Uh, I said, sure, and just come out on his own and sort of help out. So that was that was it. But my tree goes to Bobby Stoops and Bobby Pruitt. Uh, Stoops and Pruitt and I are three guys that won uh, more conference championships than home losses. And that's not easy to do. So I'm, I want to brag on Bobby Pruitt up at Marshall. Uh, I think they won like seven out of eight or nine of the conference championships. And they only lost four home games. And Bobby Pruitt at Oklahoma, I think they won uh, 10 conference championships. And he, he lost eight home games in uh, 18 years, something like that. So those are the kind of records I like for my protege guys to do. Yeah. Um, and looking, not, not Jed Fishers right now. He's he's on the way. He's, I know. He's, 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 he's working on it. And obviously Arizona is going to be moving to a new conference real soon. Obviously a big conference realignment. What's kind of your thoughts on the way things are going in college football right now? I don't think it's real smart. It's it's all about money and uh, so forth. And, uh, you know, if they continue playing their in-state rivals and all that, it, it might make a little more sense. And if Arizona and Arizona State want to go to the Big Ten, just go with football and leave all the other sports to play the people close by I wish they would do that, and that would keep it a little bit more in the common sense area than traveling clear across country for a tennis match or a swim meet or something like that. Yeah, there's been a number of softball players I've seen that have come out and been like, I commit. Yeah, and the Paris can watch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I don't like it, but it, it's the way it is right now. Yeah, we obviously have Texas and Oklahoma running the SEC real soon. What's kind of the message to them? What is something that they should expect? Well, you know, Texas A&M joined... Uh, Oh, eight or ten years ago, whatever it was, and, and so they're sort of close by. They're not on the West Coast, and uh, Oklahoma right above Texas. There, Missouri's in, so it's sort of a, a little bit of the Southeastern Conference, I guess you'd call it. So, uh, but again, uh, 
I told some Oklahoma people, I said, now, you guys are used to winning that conference championship out there all the time, just about. And now you may not win one for 20 years. So I, no, we're, I said, you're going to beat LSU and Alabama and Auburn and Florida and Tennessee and Georgia. You're going to beat all those guys. So they don't realize it. But uh, anyway, time will tell. What is, what's a quick message to these SEC newcomers? What are, they, what are they in for? You go one game at a time. Yeah, try to beat this team, prepare, and try to beat the next one. Uh, go one at a time, and obviously uh, the next game is always your most important game. And uh, the last one's the least important. Time for time, time will certainly yeah. tell. Um, another one of the big stories yeah. this offseason is the the hazing allegations at Northwestern. How have times, times have certainly changed from where they were before, but how much of what came out what yeah. is acceptable at all? I think that was shocking to all of us, and uh, especially all of us that know Coach Fitzgerald up there. And I, I, I just hard for me to believe that he knew that was going on because he's a good, solid guy and so forth. It's really stupid. I don't know where they got that stuff. And sometimes you let a strength coach put that kind of stuff in your program. And some of the older guys think it's going to make them tougher and all that kind of stuff. And it's uh, it's just ridiculous and stupid. And uh, uh, they need to be punished if all that did happen. And we're sitting here on a Tuesday. Obviously, earlier today, this uh, this big documentary, Swamp Kings, came out. I don't know if you've had the time to watch it yet, but do you have- plan to possibly watch that documentary on that? Oh, sure. I'd like to see it. I saw some of the preview stuff, yeah. and uh, yeah, there's, there's stuff in there nobody knew about. Yeah, so it, it's, it, it'll be interesting to watch. I was going to ask, is there anything in particular you're hoping to kind of learn from that documentary? Learn from it? Yeah. I'm not coaching anymore, Chris. <laughs> I don't need to learn anything. Well, not necessarily about like, no. you know, skiing well, or anything could... like that, but just anything you're very interested to hear the kind of the perspective of players and coaches mm-hmm. on. Uh, it, it'd be interesting because it, it may be different than what a lot of people thought uh, was happening. Yeah, and you know, most people just see the team on game day and how they play and so forth. And uh, what has happened during the week uh, might be surprising. We stack those teams up against your '96 national championship team. Who do you think's walking out with the victory? Oh, whoever played the best that day. Are there any coaches in this current era that kind of remind you of yourself? Well, the coaches I like: uh, Lincoln Riley out at Southern Cal, uh, Josh Heupel at Tennessee, and. Uh, I used to like Ryan Day. Uh, he stayed about not calling the plays. And obviously now we transitioned over um, to this amazing restaurant that we're sitting in right now. It's been two years now. How is it? How is that? How have those two years been? Oh, it's been excellent. Uh, we've got wonderful management to start with. Uh, I tell people all the time that uh, being involved in restaurants is like being involved with a team. You got to have leadership at the top. Uh, Freddie Weeby, who... Uh, pretty much put the deal together and some of our uh, managers here uh, do an excellent job and our employees you know the uh, from people in the kitchen to the bartenders the servers everybody uh, come in with good attitude and on time and the food here is really good everybody comes says coach the food is excellent and I said it is so I think we got a good thing going but like anything else you got to keep pushing you got to Keep trying to get better all the time, so that's what we're doing. You mentioned some of that good food. If someone walks in for the first time, what's kind of the go-to thing you're going to point to them on the menu for? Oh, there's several. Uh, our fish is fresh, uh, mahi, a, a snapper. Uh, the short ribs seem to be a real favorite. Uh, yeah, Our buffet brunches uh, Saturday and Sunday are very popular also. Uh, even the hamburger, some guy comes in and says, Coach, I get that Spurrier hamburger every time. I say, I order that a lot myself, too, and I'm not really a hamburger guy. Uh, but it's uh, sort of a steak burger, lettuce, tomato, and uh, instead of the fries, I usually get asparagus or something green with it. So my players would be proud because I'll <laughs> tell them to get something green on your plate. Yeah. So I try to live by that also. Um, and obviously that two year anniversary just kind of passed and you decided to do a little charity event for the Ronald McDonald house. How did that come together? And well, we try to, uh, keep involved a lot of our local charities here. Ronald McDonald house is an excellent one. Uh, bread of the mighty, uh, feed so many people in the area that need help. So we, we constantly try to, uh, involve our charities and let them, uh, get a good uh, share what we are able to make here. And obviously one of the staples is just all the memorabilia you have here. Is there anything new that's come in since you've opened up? Oh, we need to add some things. Uh, I, I still have some things uh, that uh, I, we want to put in here. Yeah, all the way back to high school, things like yeah. that. High school, uh, we forced us to wear a couple of state baseball championships and uh, we don't 
we don't really have that in here. It's uh, actually in storage in St. Augustine, <laughs> but it's, it's coming out here pretty soon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking it to speak with us today. All right, no problem, Chris. Good to be with you.